Hello and welcome back. Right, this is a video that I've been looking forward to uh, for quite some time. First off, you're probably going to notice this thing in the corner here. A present from my wife. She said that my videos needed a little bit of colour and a bit of light in them. So she bought me this nice little uh, light up USB planetarium. So what I've done is I've put it in the video and what you can see is this cable's coming out here and I'm making use of this nice little USB hub that we've got in here to power it. So it's even been powered by the Eurorack. So thanks for that um, and I hope it brightens up the video. Right, so what's this video about? Now it's one I've been looking forward to making for quite a while because it takes me back to the days that I started off with Eurorack in this specific case. Now it's not exactly these modules, but if I was to sell Eurorack to somebody, this is exactly how I would do it. So what have we got going on here? So we've got a kick, we've got a main voice, and we've got some effects. Now in this case, everything is what you see is what you get. There's nothing going on outside of the case except a tiny bit of e uh, EQ for, for YouTube. But other than that, everything's here. So there's a kick, there's a compressor. So we're side chaining that onto our main voice and we got some effects. All of our um, CV sequencing is going on over here. And then our main step sequencer is here. And the reason I like this is because you create music via happy accidents. Then you can perform using this sequencer and this sequencer. So I think the best thing that we can do is to demo it. And then I'll go through a quick walkthrough of the patch. Okay, that 
kind of went to plan mostly uh, a couple of little mistakes in there but i hope you appreciate the performance there i really enjoyed it and that is how i would advertise a percussive bass synth with a kick with compression with side chain all in one master clock reset and two performance points here um, i didn't even do any um, tweaking of the filter could have gone completely over the top with tweaking you know effects and filter and god knows what but just kept it very very simple on the performance side right so what do we have going on here okay my first performance performance point here is Steppy. I absolutely love Steppy and I'd recommend it to anybody. It looks very simple. It is simple. It's just a four channel gate sequencer, but my God, is it really, really good. Now, the reason it's so good is because when you're in loopy mode here, it makes everything super performative. So you can see here, I've got my main, my main baseline here. Um, these are, are the points here. I've also got the kit going through four on the floor on here and here. So this gives me three performance points. I can mute everything and go for a complete rest. I can just play every single note of through the BIA here or if I want a fill on the kick as well on every note and I can press this button here so I get absolutely everything if I want every other kick I could press both of these I didn't um, because just didn't quite work on this performance but as you can see you've got um, loads of loads of ways that you can play this so the right hand here is playing steppy and the left hand here is playing mimetic now with mimetic the reason I love this is because you tend not to program it uh, you just hit load and shred if something good comes out from your modulation here which I'm doing on BIA mostly and also on the carbon um, if anyone wants any more details on, on how I do this then then let me know there are quite a few videos previously that I've done but I'll, I'll do a full walkthrough if that's what people want but the way this works is you create random patterns using load and shred you find something you click save you've got eight save points here now my main two points were playing on save points one and five but then what I did was I created an intro across all of these so I'm playing my intro from right to left now I didn't play these ones I just played the here and here and the way I created those was based off my main two leads here I cancelled out I think it's channel three here which is the fold because the fold on the BIA is producing most of the percussive elements here so I cancelled that out and that led me to the intro which was the kind of Tom's intro so let's just play that again so this is the intro now that's playing a kick so let's turn the kick off here the Bifaco kick let's turn that off so all of that is coming from the BIA. Now, for those of you that don't know much about Eurorack, this is a percussive synth. And it's currently in um, kind of kick mode, but then I'm modulating which mode it's in between bassline and kick, and then this uh, metal mode, which kind of gives more of effects. So if you just listen to that, it sounds like there's a kick coming. There's some toms, there's some kind of... There are some effects here, so let's just turn off the effects. But even without the effects, I mean, that BIA is just magical. So let's put some effects back on. I'll come into the effects in a minute because this isn't what it seems. Right, so that's my intro. Um, and then from there, I just... I just um, took channel 3 here and then if you twist the CV knob you can introduce that little bit of fold which is what came in here so let's listen to the second one so let's just brought a bit of fold in and all I did was just introduce gradually more and more fold into these save points for the intro so let's go to the next one so there's various various intro points and then my main two parts are over here and then we go to the B section Let's bring the kick back I mean that's not the best kick to be fair it's a bit muddy but it's the smallest kick I've got it's not something I don't get on very well with it but I, for purpose of this demo I wanted to have a kick in the case so that everything is in the case now let's just go and show some of those performance parts so I can mute everything so the kick doesn't play all the main bit lead or I can mute the kick and just play the BIA on every note here which is what I was doing as the uh, fill gaps between switches. So 
but notice that that mutes the kick. And then if I want to fill with the kick, so then I'm using those fills to then switch between these two parts, so let's just do a switch. Switch back with a big fill. And that's all that I was doing. So I hope that was a fairly simple sit. Um, so I hope that was a fairly simple um, explanation of, of what's going on there. And that there is quite a lot going on, obviously. I mean, there wouldn't be a lot going on if there weren't wires here. So, what can I show you? So, let's go. So let's take out the fold. So this is the fold. So let's just see what BIA is doing with no fold. Pretty much no fold going on there. So like I said at the beginning, so go to save point two. Take the folder. So you can just see that was just a tiny bit of CV modulation on the fold that made all that difference. So yeah, very modulatable um, component this. So, to sum it up, if I'm selling Eurorack to somebody um, who's quite well musically inclined but has never thought about Eurorack, this is how I would do it. Get a small case, create a mono synth, but don't just create a copy of your regular synth. What you need is a percussive voice, preferably a kick, got a compressor here to sidechain it against, an effects unit, some CV modulation, and a gate sequencer. The rest of this case, so we've got a clock and all I'm using PAMS for is a clock and reset, but that can be used for more modulation as well. And the beauty of this case is you get a couple of malts built in as well. Also, if you have a MIDI interface here, you can MIDI uh, sync this off to an Ableton clock if, you, if you've if got more, if there's any more that you want to want to do. But yeah, that's how I would sell this case. Um, this is an output module. Obviously, you need an output to convert to line. I'm not using this because this one cable here and there's another cable from the kick as well. They're going off to uh, Expert Seat Sleeper's ES9 audio interface just so that I can send stems out to Ableton and record this for you guys in something that actually sounds half decent. Okay, so yeah, that about sums it up. I hope you enjoyed this one. I've really enjoyed it. I've been playing this patch most of the day. I'm probably going to play it most of the night as well because I really, really love it. In fact, I'd really like to keep this case um, as it is because a few guys have asked me if, if I ever perform. The answer is no, but with a case like this and a setup like this, I could probably perform this for like 15, 20 minutes and really enjoy it. Okay, so yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Um, always nice to get appreciation and the algorithm loves it. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome and feel free to subscribe. Click the notification button if you want to be notified. I do put these videos out usually around about once a week, sometimes twice a week, but I occasionally take a couple of weeks off. So don't think I've died if I haven't produced one for a couple of weeks. I did get a few um, messages from people thinking that there was something wrong, but no, sometimes I just have to take a couple of weeks off a bit busy with work. Okay, so thanks a lot, and I'll just play this out for a bit, and I'll see you in the next one.